Hey everybody, happy Cybersecurity Awareness Month. Happy Friday. Um, this is the end of week one of our Cybersecurity Awareness Month video series. I'm Don Church, I'm WorkSmart's events manager, and we have the fabulous Marissa Wayman, of course, our marketing manager. Well, hello everybody. With her fabulous crown today. <laughs> um, and we have a guest star, a trick-or-treater, so to speak. We have the fabulous, amazing Courtney Armstrong, who is a WorkSmart uh, senior account manager and team lead. Hey, everybody. <laughs> um, so you may be wondering why we have the amazing Courtney with us today. And I'm going to tell you in just a second. But first, <laughs> all right, so this week has been all about the scariest threats on the internet. We've talked about your wicked witches of the web who lure us uh, into dangerous environments with email tricks um, that look like treats. We've talked about the infestations of malware and ransomware. We've talked about your virtual vampires who just hunt for your password and then suck the life out of all the data they can find. <laughs> um, and all of that is really frightening, right? And we're almost done with the scariest threats, I promise. Um, but we can't end this week without talking about some ghost stories. Yeah, and so basically that means in our in our technical terms, we're gonna talk about cybersecurity breach stories. Uh, and we could sit around and just tell you some stories but it's not very fun. So to make it a little bit more entertaining, John and I are gonna play a little game with Courtney. Uh, and you can play along as you watch. So we're basically going to give Courtney, each of us, two cybersecurity ghost stories. Uh, one will be true and one will be a lie. And we would like you, Courtney, uh, to guess which is which. Cool. So, uh, Dawn, why don't uh, why don't you give it a go first? <laughs> okay, I'm ready. I'm ready. I've got some creepy spiders behind me. Courtney has got her uh, Halloween earrings on. Marissa has her terrifying princess crown on. I think we're ready for some ghost stories. So, alrighty, round number one. Courtney, I have two ghost stories for you. One is true and one is a lie. I'm going to read them both and you get to decide which one you think is which. All okay. right. Story number one. Uh, so a UK based energy firm was scammed out of $243,000 when criminals targeted that company with an effective vishing campaign. And vishing isn't something we've talked about yet on this series, but vishing for short is phishing that occurs over the phone. So uh, this incident marked the first time an AI, um, artificial intelligence based uh, voice fraud netted such a high payload. Okay, so that's story number one. Story number two, in 2019, an MSP serving over 600 dental offices in the Northeast was breached with the form of spyware that was traced back to an email received by their HR director in the summer of 2018. The cyber criminal monitored the MSP's email exchanges for the following eight months before sending an email campaign to all 600 of their clients requesting that their monthly payment be redirected to the hacker's account and 27% complied. So that's story number two. So to recap, you have two options. Story number one, cyber criminals use AI to impersonate a CEO's voice and steal $243,000 via a vishing attack. Or story number two, criminals watch email activity at an MSP for eight months before asking clients to redirect payment, which is true and which is a lie. Okay, so I think that 
The first one is true because I was listening to the radio this morning and they were talking about AI and how it's growing like crazy. And also I work for an MSP. So I would just hate to think that an MSP um, was attacked that way. So I'm going to guess that the first story is true and the second one is a lie. We have a winner. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> yes, that is true. Okay. Yes, crazy, right? I, I think it's kind of crazy that they like synthesized the CEO's voice with artificial intelligence and that somebody believed that. It's just crazy to me. But I will say that number two was actually inspired by um, an article that I read about MSPs that serve the dental industry. There were actually three uh, that were targeted in 2019 that led to different um, negative outcomes for their clients. One of those actually infected hundreds of dentists in Washington and Oregon with malware wow. um, and went out of business as a result. Um, but it was, <laughs> that story is not true. It was sort of a combination of a couple of different stories that I had heard um, all kind of conglomerated into one. So, but yes, spooky, spooky, super spooky. So scary. <laughs> All right. Well, then I guess it's my turn to go. Let's see if I can stump our guest. Um, all right. So again, I'm going to tell a story, then I'm going to tell another one. And then we're going to guess whether it's, you know, well, Courtney is going to guess whether it's a truth or a lie. Uh, so my first one involves a local grocery store who earlier this year had a security breach that uh, basically impacted 300 people um, who were involved in the company's loyalty program. So they had submitted applications, which contained information about, you know, think about when you go to the grocery store and you fill out your information. So all of that information was actually obtained by two logins of the employees of the chain who had access to this you know, spreadsheet of information. So they use that then to, for a whole month to siphon off the data from that database before it was actually ever discovered. Ooh, okay, so that's story number one. Story number two is about a healthcare a rehab facility. Um, similar story here, email accounts were inappropriately accessed and there was evidence found of malware attacks and infestations across the company or the organization's uh, technology systems. They quickly cleaned the infection, reset all the user passwords to identify, and then they identified like what actually had happened so that they could prevent it from happening again. And even though they were able to quickly do all of that, they still were able, they, they still have evidence that they exposed the first names and last names of employees and residents of the rehab facility. And that included um, social security numbers, driver license numbers, all of that, you know, limited amount of health information, but still a lot of personal information. So based on that, we've got story one, which is about the grocery store that got shopped. And then we have number two, which is the rehab center that needs to take better care. Oh man, they're both so scary. Um, <laughs> I, hmm, I'm gonna go with number one being your lie, a grocery store, because I feel like a malicious person would probably target something like an electronics company or like healthcare or biopharma rather than a grocery store just seems like an interesting target. Um, even though I do love food, but yeah. Um, and then I think the second one with the rehab facility is the lie. I mean the truth. I'm sorry, the truth. You are correct. The first incident is actually the lie, but it was based on a much larger target. Uh, it was a, it was Marriott, it was a hotel chain, and they actually exposed, and this was earlier this year, they reported to have exposed 5.2 
million hotel guests in their uh, in their company's loyalty application program. Wow. Yeah. That's terrifying. <laughs> yes. Chilling. <sighs> now, do you have that... some toys for us, Courtney? Yes. So I'm really good at this game. We'll see if you guys are as good as I am um, in guessing mine. So I have two stories. I have a truth and a lie, and you guys can guess um, which one is which. And this is kind of based on experiences of actually, my, my truth is based on experience I've actually had with a, a real life client. Um, and then my lie, well, we'll see if you can figure out which one's which. Um, okay, my first story is about a church um, that had a security issue with their firewall and a malicious person gained access through the firewall um, through an open port to their environment. And then once they got in there, they encrypted all of their systems. Um, they sent out a request for a ransomware sum of $3,000. Um, their IT company tried to restore the data from their backups, but the data was not restorable. So thankfully, they actually had cybersecurity insurance, which ended up communicating with uh, this malicious person and paying the ransomware and they were actually able to get their data back within 48 hours. So this kind of starts out as a ghost story, but has a little bit of a happy ending. Um, but obviously their data is still out in the ether of the world somewhere. Um, my second story, so that's story number one. Uh, my second story is about a real estate firm that had an account payable person receive an email um, from her CFO requesting $10,000 be wired to a specific account immediately. Um, she transferred the money immediately without calling him to verify whether the email was legitimate or the account was correct. Um, the email was actually, no surprise here, from a malicious person um, and the money was never retrieved. Ooh. Which one do you think is a truth and a lie? I have some thoughts. <laughs> you go first then. <laughs> well, the second one is something I like to think we have learned more about. It's like the modern day uh, Nigerian prince scam. So I like to think that we have more uh, mechanisms in place to uh, make sure that we're like checking when someone asks for money, especially if it's not, you know, this, in this case, it sounds like it's a little bit more to their day-to-day, -day, but still it would seem like those type, those two roles would have a, a double check in place. Um, so I, that's how I feel about that. And then the first one, um, even though they seem like a smaller target, I do think that the uh, hole in a firewall can be a really easy target because it's facing the internet. So what, what, do, you, what do you think, Dawn? Well, this is tricky, super tricky because I'm aware that things like both of these stories happen. So I do like your point though about uh, the church being a smaller target and I'm aware that most Interestingly, um, most cybersecurity attacks do happen uh, with small businesses, and that would include a church, even though it's not a business. I'm going to go with the church being true. Yeah, that's my, that's my final right. answer. You agree? I agree with John. Okay. You guys are right. We're so ah! good at this game. Woo, we're three for three. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome yes <laughs> though I will say with the lie I have had very similar situations where people have transferred money but Marissa you're 100% right people are learning that whenever they get a request for a wire transfer they should check the email to see if there's any obvious signs that, ha that it has been spoofed they know that they need to call the person to verify did you actually send this do you actually want me to send this money so I do think it's happening less frequently now thankfully Cybersecurity awareness training for the win. <laughs> yeah, actually, what you're saying here, Courtney, makes the the whole purpose of the game we played today is because we want to illustrate that cyber attacks will they're going to happen and they're going to feel sometimes like this unbelievable 
scenario to this super mundane day-to-day -day things that we do. So it's it just it's important for us to remain vigilant at all times. And next week we're actually gonna focus on how you can avoid becoming zombies on the internet and avoid mindlessly clicking. So stay tuned uh, as we start to focus more on how we can protect ourselves. Courtney, thank you so much for joining us. It was so much fun today. Thank you, thanks for having me. Yeah, for sure. And I'll give you all a little bit of a hint or a treat. <laughs> Part of not being a zombie on the internet is that cybersecurity awareness training. So we're going to talk a lot about that next week. So, alrighty, that's it for today. Courtney, this was so much fun. Thank you for joining us. Thank Marissa, you. Marissa, I mean, Marissa, you know, it's always really fun for me to hang out with you. <laughs> so, I'll see you soon. I'll see you later. Have a good one, everybody. Bye. Bye.